When I was 18, I started using opiates. I just started using it and I used it like every day. It started up in my town. It started in small milligrams in my town, like five milligram per but set. Did you get it from just a friend friends. Or did you get it from a doctor? No, friends. I just felt like okay finally. I didn't, I've never been comfortable in my skin before that. So when I did pills, it was like I was finally like okay to talk, okay to like hang out with my friends and not have anxiety all the time. It just finally made me feel like I was like everyone else. You can always find it no matter what. Did you have to go far? No. <laughs> I think I live in, oh I live in Spencer now but I never had to leave like Lester Spencer until like my last six months of using, then I finally ventured into Worcester. <laughs> what about the expense? How did you afford it? Lots of ways. <laughs> I um I would steal, I would tell my parents like I spent my money on like stupid things, so I needed their money, or I would say like I can't pay my car bill. Like I would make up, I had a hundred thousand reasons. <laughs> it's a job to be a drug addict. No. Yeah, well you can laugh about it now, but it was, I mean, I had no idea. I really didn't. Or, you know, you'd have maybe a five dollar bill on the counter and then all of a sudden it's gone and you'd ask everybody and nobody would know where it was. So you, I thought I was the crazy one. It was really hard for our family because um, I have two older sons who both graduated from UMass and never had any addiction issues. My husband and I, we don't even drink alcohol. So it was really hard for us to really even figure out what was going on with my son. Um, his signs of use were he wasn't going to school, so the school filed a chins against him. This and high school? Yeah. And when he went to court, he was very honest with the judge and told the judge that he was leaving so that he could go and smoke marijuana. And at that time, I was really concerned because the marijuana is so much stronger than it was when we were attending college. It smells like a skunk. And he just seemed so out of it that I was just really worried about where this was going to go. So that's when I started like looking online and I found out about Learn to Cope. And then when we found Learn to Cope, it was like, it's probably the best thing that ever happened throughout this whole ordeal because you walk in and you're not alone. You know, Kaylin reached recovery by doing a, um, going through detox. And Locally? Uh, yes, in Worcester. Okay. And then she went to a 28-day or 30-day intense 12-step program up in New Hampshire. And then from there she went to Sober Living in Dorchester. And her biggest part of recovery is the 12 steps, I feel, mm -hmm. that she does. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life now. Most of our kids don't get any insurance coverage. They get maybe five days of detox. Mm -hmm. And the insurance companies won't pay for like additional treatment but they need at least like 30 days away from home and then they need to follow up with that in sober living. Some of our families we've heard have paid up to maybe $100,000 in out-of-pocket expenses for additional treatment. There's no guarantees that they're gonna get the, they're gonna go into recovery their first attempt. Mm -hmm. It could be several attempts, several years before recovery sticks. But the most successful way for them to reach recovery is not to be in the same community, to move away and get support. And what we spent was a small fraction to some of the people, mm -hmm. you know, because Kaylin went twice. Mm -hmm. um, and she got it. And she Over got 50, it. Over 50,000, under 50,000. It was un under 50,000. It was, I mean, they, they, the cost would probably be maybe 15,000 for us. 15, okay. It's, that's like a drop in the hat with some, from what people pay. Mm -hmm. Because like Terry said, they usually don't get it the first time or the second time. All the parents in our group, we're not professionals, we're all parents. We all give our experience and which treatments, sober living environments have worked for us. So, and I think if it wasn't for all of the parents coming together, we wouldn't have the success rate that we have in getting our kids into treatment and recovery. 
And that's really one of the main focuses is that we want to give parents hope. We want them to feel that they're going to get through this and we offer that by being supportive to one another. Um, Learn to Cope is actually a state pilot program with the Department of Public Health and we're able to dispense and train Narcan to our parents because parents could be first responders. And I feel it's really important that Narcan's available to everyone because um, part of this whole journey is they can relapse. They could have been incarcerated, they could be in treatment, and they can't use at the same level. And you don't know if you know if they if they overdose and they're you know they're given that second chance that might be the opportunity for them to get into mm -hmm. treatment. I can hold a steady job now. It's really nice. <laughs> if they have a child that's an addict, um, don't ever give up hope on them. Um, continue to support them. That's the big thing, the hope, because don't ever lose hope.